Bon, thank you uh, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Happy to be here, as We're always. We're just chatting. You're, you're packed for these three days. It's been a, a unique conference so far, but very exciting, yeah. very exciting. And you're 45 days or so into your CEO role now, 56 right? 56 days, four Nobody's hours counted. and 27 minutes. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun. Good. What, what, you moved from COO to CEO. I did. So, you know, you knew the squad. I did. The organization. And what has changed for you in that role? I, um, not a lot. I, I would say that thematically I'm working on pretty similar things as I was working on when I was the uh, CEO but I'm probably spending more time in, in a couple of areas. Uh, one is external stakeholders, being here with AdvaMed, spending time with investors, of course, spending time with uh, regulators around the world, government uh, agencies and whatnot. Uh, and then the second one is really simplifying the way that we were running the business. So my first 56 days being about what can we say no to so we can be great in a couple of areas. So in the past, I was downstream focused doing a bunch of stuff. I would say these days I'm trying to just limit the amount of things that we're doing as a company. So that's been somewhat different. And you know, it's interesting because that seems to be what most of the strategics are doing these days. They seem to be divesting themselves of the, maybe the properties they could give to somebody else to do a better job with. Yep. And they're really focusing on a number of core competencies rather than trying to be everything to everybody. Because yep. the industry is going that way right yep. now. On the portfolio side, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we're looking at uh, what does the right portfolio look like? Uh, what are things that we can develop organically? What are things that we need to go externally? What are the right partnerships in innovation? So we do a lot of stuff uh, as well. The industry has an idea of what Zimmer is and what don't they know about Zimmer? We're a different company. Uh, we're not uh, your uh, grandfather's uh, Zimmer Biomed anymore. Uh, I, I, like to, uh, I like to say that we're no longer a product company, we're a solutions company. And I know, Joe, that sounds like what everybody else is saying, but uh, the reality is that we're no longer just an implant company. We're looking at problems, problems being clinical outcomes, safety, efficiency in an operating room, speed in an operating room, uh, length of the episode occur. Uh, we're looking at products, technology, data to solve those problems. To that regard, over the last three, five years, we developed meaningful relationships, uh, Apple in informatics, Microsoft in uh, mixed reality to drive efficiency in an operating room. Uh, partnerships with uh, smart companies or smart technology companies like Canary Medical, Bill was here uh, earlier, uh, and just really thinking about the problem more than the technology to solve the problem. So that's, that's the difference in my environment. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I've been in this industry for 32 years. And most of the med tech companies used to talk about features of their product, features of their device. Never before have I seen the top 10, top 20 talk about solution provisions. Sure and the changing centers of care driving that now than, more than ever. Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, you don't look 32 years old, so impressive you've been here for 32 years. Um, it starts with who is the customer. And again, in the past, we always assumed the customer was the physician. So we innovated towards physicians. Today, we realize that decision maker has changed. It's the patient, it's the physician, it's the provider, it's the payer, it's regula uh, regulatory agencies around the world. So with Zimmer being more than your grandfather's Oldsmobile or orthopedic company, tell me about the transition now of digital yeah. into your portfolio. And, 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 and I don't mean irresponsibly use the word digital, but digital and data. Yeah. And how is that going to impact your thoughts moving forward as a leader? Yeah, let me give you a, a couple of data points. So let's start with, again, the evolution here. 2018, 98% of our R&D money was implants, uh, hips, knees, uh, shoulder implants, trauma, whatnot. Uh, today, around 50% of uh, our new product development dollars are going towards data, technology, digital, and whatnot. So the change is real, it's happened. And that's internal, externally we're doing things with Canary Medical, uh, Microsoft, Apple, so the, the transformation is real. How we're thinking about digital? We're thinking about better outcomes. Safety, can we engage in predictive analytics through the data that we get? to guarantee a safer outcome, safer procedure, uh, lowering the cost of care. Uh, can we get glitches out of the system? Can we understand through data where time and money is being spent in places where time and money should not be spent? We're thinking about digital around the patient experience. Can we do uh, physical therapy at home? So you as a patient don't need to go into a facility to do that. Uh, we do that through our application, my mobility with Apple. So that's what we think about digital. Thinking episode occur, and thinking inefficiencies in that episode occur. You know, United Healthcare had shared recently that 
by 2030, 55% of their lives are going to be managed out of an ASC? I believe that number. Uh, we believe in orthopedics already between 40 to 60, and I know it's a wide margin, 40 to 60% of cases will move into an ASC within the next 36 months. Uh, that is a total, totally different code point, uh, different customer needs, uh, different patient behaviors, and we're addressing that. And you've got different um, business partners there too, so we do. I think we're going to have to have more of a shared risk in that environment we do. than just selling it into an, in, to an institution and saying, here's our robot or here's our system, yep. good luck. I love that you're saying that. So we got some data points around uh, the cost to serve, if you will, uh, in healthcare, in orthopedics primarily, but broadly speaking, healthcare. When you think about orthopedics, Joe, around 15%, one five, is we, industry. That's pharmaceutical companies, that's medical devices, uh, that's supply companies. So that tells you the other 85% is something else. What's the other 85%? It can be labor, it can be readmission rates, it can be inefficiencies in the episode of care that I was talking about, uh, which in the first 90 days post-discharge can cost a lot of money. Uh, that's a conversation that in an inpatient, outpatient setting, doesn't gain much traction. But when you have this conversation in ASC, they care. When you talk about, hey, listen, we can argue about the 15%, I will lower the price of my knee versus Stryker, Johnson & Johnson, whoever, or we can partner in the other 85%, can I reduce the length of stay? Can I reduce the changes of readmission? Can I have, can we do this surgery with less people in the operating room? That's a meaningful conversation. That's a conversation we're having. And again, tying this to your earlier question, that's the role of digital, that's the role of technology. And you're, a, you're one of those organizations that has an early move into ASCs. Zimmer's done it, Stryker's done a nice job of it as well. The others have been laggards a bit. What are the, some of the lessons without revealing the secrets sure. you've learned that were new, new experiences yeah. for Zimmer? Sure. Uh, first of all, the fact that you need to have dedicated people. You, you can part-time ASC. It cannot be uh, people spending time somewhere else, every once in a while going to the ASC. You need to have dedicated people that understand the ASC, uh, that they understand the problems that I was talking about in ASC. So that's number one. Number two, contracting. Uh, we need to have category leadership. We need to contract uh, properly. We didn't in the past do that effectively. Uh, we're in a different space now. Uh, number three, the role of technology. So again, I won't go through the same answer around robotics, informatics, and whatnot, but that's a, that's a lesson learned. Uh, and then have the courage to partner with the right people when you cannot do it yourself. We partner with other companies in sterilization. We've partnered with other companies in booms and lights. We have partnered and we'll continue to partner with other companies on infrastructure build up and whatnot. So I would say those four things come to mind. So what are you looking forward to as we wrap up? What are you looking forward to as CEO? And how does healthcare move over the next three to five years that is going to reward those who see it coming and maybe not do so well for those who don't? Yeah. Well, first of all, what am I looking uh, to do or to achieve as CEO? We want to continue to be a mission-centric, uh, patient-obsessed type of company. And you asked me earlier, what am I doing in my first 56 days? Is to continue to talk about the purpose of the company, which is very much aligned with the purpose of AdvaMed here. So that's, that's, that's the legacy, if you will. Uh, beyond that, we do want to change the standard of care in orthopedics. It's very complex. Uh, innovation, 32 years in medtech, has happened at a far faster rate in cardiovascular, general surgery, urology, uh, other states, uh, respiratory, pulmonology. Uh, we still in orthopedics are behind when it comes to innovation. And we at Zimmer Bio may want to change the standard of care. Can we make it shorter? Uh, can we deliver better outcomes? Can we reduce complications from a safety perspective, which still happen way too often? Uh, can we take cost out of the system? So that's what we want to do. And I think that's the legacy that all of us CEOs need to deliver. Uh, did we change the way that the standard of care uh, was practiced before and after our tenure? Uh, did we deliver meaningful innovation that was patient-centric, but also kept into account the fact that you got to reduce cost, the fact that you do have other stakeholders, not just the patient, that provider, that payer, that system. So those are the things we're working on. Well, it's going to be fascinating to watch you as you battle through this and certainly lead the way with Zimmer. Very excited. Very excited. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, my friend. Bye. I'm Joe Mullings from the floor of the MedTed Conference in Anaheim. Be well.